Gary Peters has served in the Senate since 2015. The Democrat served in the U.S. Navy Reserve and has been a strong supporter of our nation's veterans. He currently serves as ranking member of the Senate Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee. He also serves on the Senate Armed Services Committee. Both have been strong advocates for protecting the Great Lakes and providing clean water for our state. We want to begin with what, what's happening around the U.S. We have some anger and frustration in the wake of the death of George Floyd. So our first question for you, Senators, is from Amanda in Grand Rapids. And she wants to know what resources will you use to determine the best way to eradicate systemic racism in our country? And Senator Peters, we will begin with you. Well, well, thank you. And it is an incredibly important question, particularly after the horrific incident and the, the murder of uh, George Floyd. Certainly all of our hearts go out to the family, and we understand that, unfortunately, this is not uh, something that happens occasionally. It happens in, well, time and time again all across our country, and we have to deal with the systemic issues underlying racism and the criminal justice system that uh, has not performed in a way that is equitable. That In this country, everybody, no matter who you are, no matter where you live, should be treated equally uh, under the law. There are a number of things we need to do, although one particular effort that I've been engaged in is to create a national commission on uh, a criminal justice. Uh, actually, this was something that was done uh, 50 years ago uh, during a very difficult time in our history in the 1960s uh, and a need to take a comprehensive look at the criminal justice system. Uh, over 200 recommendations came out of that uh, commission, most all of them were adopted we made major changes some of them were fairly straightforward like when you dial 911 on your phone that actually came out from the criminal justice commission 50 years ago well a lot has happened in 50 years and we still have a long ways to go and we need to revisit that in fact after the the horrible events in ferguson and president obama's uh, report that came out uh, their top recommendation was to have this kind of broad commission that will do a complete look and uh, the bill that I've uh, introduced, and we actually passed it in the Senate uh, in the last session, and we'll hopefully pass it again and send it over to the House, has broad bipartisan support. Uh, my bill has 20 co-sponsors, roughly half Republicans, uh, half uh, Democrats. I've got the support of every major group associated uh, with the criminal justice issue. That means all of the major civil rights groups, the NAACP, the Urban League, uh, National Action Network, as well as all the major law enforcement groups, representing police officers and prosecutors. It's important to get everybody around the table uh, and put together a comprehensive plan to deal with all of the aspects of the criminal justice system. It's complex. We have to deal with it in a comprehensive way, and we have to have the political will to get it done. And the way to do that is to do it in a bipartisan way and get everybody together uh, from across the ideological spectrum. We've done it before in this country. We did it 50 years ago. It wasn't perfect, but it moved us in the right direction. We <laughs> need to do it again, and now is the time to make it happen. Senator Stabenow, in the wake of the death of George Floyd and the reaction that we've seen around the nation and right here in our state, what can you do from a federal level to try to heal some of that pain and try to end some of the systemic racism? Well, Rick, it's great to be with you, to both you and Sherry, and I appreciate this discussion this evening. You know, it is it is horrible what happened, and I think all of us watching uh, that video uh, were, were stunned. I, I know I felt that I wish I could go right into the video and push the officer off of George Floyd's neck and it was stunning to see that there was not uh, an action to do that and i'm very glad that there are charges being brought this evening certainly these kinds of things have gone on they're too often and too long and i understand the pain that people feel and the anger and the fear that people fear and this has got to change i do believe we're at a, a point now where there's an opportunity to do that. I think federally for us, even though decisions are made locally by local prosecutors and mayors and states and so on, we do provide federal funding and it's very important that we uh, make sure that we are tying that to more accountability 
um, transparency training. Uh, we are working as a Democratic caucus. I hope this will be bipartisan. Senator Cory Booker and Kamala Harris are leading us on a package of bills that would address those things. Let me also say that uh, I released a report uh, from uh, the policy committee that I chair in the Senate on what's happening on the larger question of racial disparities. I mean, under COVID-19, racial disparities are on full uh, display right now. And what happens with the lack of health care that creates a situation where, while we have 14% of our citizens in Michigan being African-American, they comprise 40% of the deaths. When we look at housing and food disparities and job disparities, and we look at the fact that the majority of us can stay home and work from home because there are essential workers going in every day and keeping the economy going, keeping us safe, working in hospitals and nursing homes and so on. And disproportionately, these are people of color who uh, may not uh, you find themselves being paid enough to even take care of their own family. And what happens when the school closes and you're an essential worker and you have to go to work anyway? And what do you do with your own child care needs? So there are a whole range of things, education, healthcare, economy, that have to be addressed. But immediately, we have to focus on what needs to happen in, in law enforcement, police reforms, and criminal justice reforms as a part of that. Our next question is focused on the coronavirus and the toll it's taken on the American economy. People have been out of work for months and Denise from Otisville watching on WJRT has a very simple question. She wants to know when, and I will include if, people will receive a second stimulus payment. Senator Peters? Well, I think we are, we have to see how things uh, continue to uh, unfold. Right now, I think uh, one of the, the priorities that we're looking at is uh, to make sure that uh, those folks who find themselves unemployed can continue to put a roof over their head and put uh, food on, on the table. There's uh, currently uh, unemployment assistance that is available, and part of this, the CARES Act and the pandemic response, uh, which is something that I worked a great deal on, was to make sure that folks who could normally get uh, unemployment insurance could qualify for it. Folks uh, who are small business owners, people who are part of the gig economy, our independent contractors, folks who drive Ubers, for example. These are people who had, were impacted in a major way and were facing a dire financial situation. Uh, most families uh, are in a very difficult situation if you miss a paycheck and if you miss two, you are in an incredibly serious uh, position. So we wanted to make sure that uh, those folks are taken care of. But also we have to make sure our small businesses uh, have the resources that they need in order to survive. Uh, we will all want this economy to open as quickly as possible and safely as possible. Uh, the way to do that is to make sure our small businesses survive. They are the engine of growth. They are the folks that create jobs and, and, and allow our local communities uh, to prosper. And if they don't survive, uh, a, a recovery in this economy will take a whole lot longer. Uh, and that's why we put in the uh, a, a paycheck protection program to make sure that employees could stay on the payroll. Those folks who found uh, their company uh, had to shutter their doors that they could continue to stay on the payroll. Uh, that program uh, needed to constantly be refined and it's an example today in the Senate. Uh, we passed legislation uh, along the lines of what was passed in the House in a bipartisan way. It passed unanimously. Democrats, Republicans came together to provide even more flexibility for those uh, small businesses. So uh, as we continue to assess so where the economy is, how if people are being impacted, small businesses and individual families, so we need to look at making the kinds of investments uh, to make sure that we can get through this. We are facing a, a double punch here, a public health crisis and an economic crisis at the same time. Uh, and we also know that in order to get through the economic crisis, we have to, to treat the, the fundamental disease and the virus and the spread of this disease and other investments we'll be making are related to testing and personal protection uh, equipment. But I think can say, uh, at least as far as I'm concerned, or the question uh, that was asked, uh, that if the economy continues to need some stimulus to get back up on its feet, uh, we're going to have to be prepared to, to do that. Because if the economy stumbles too much and goes into a deep recession, the recovery takes a whole lot longer and the cost is a whole lot longer. We have to be prepared to stand behind the American people to make sure we get through this uh, together and have the financial wherewithal to get up on our feet as quickly as possible. 
Thank you, Senator Peters. Uh, Senator Stabenow, your response to a second stimulus payment. Well, I certainly support doing that, but I think there's a lot of other things that we need to do as well. And uh, I want to thank Senator Peters for his leadership on the unemployment expansion for, for folks that are, you know, single with small business owners, uh, single proprietorships that, that normally wouldn't be able to get help during this pandemic and, and the other folks that have been able to do that. And it's based on his legislation. So I want to thank him for that. But we also have to be thinking long Longer term about what people are going to need right now, whether it's food assistance. You know, we've got folks coming into um, the food banks that have um, that folks have never seen before. They've never had to ask for help before, and so we need some uh, increases in support under the supplemental nutrition program and and some uh, housing help for folks and and uh, the, the stimulus uh, payment that was talked about. Uh, and also, I'm really pleased as we were on the program this evening that in fact the Senate did pass Senator Peters and I have been working very hard to get this extension on the small business uh, program because we've got so many uh, uh, restaurants and folks in tourism and others that haven't been able to use the program because of the way it was originally set up and so we've been working really hard and uh, while we were in the middle of the program we were they we got the word that uh, uh, we find that we originally had some objections on the Republican side and they lifted those and we were able to actually get that done so so that's a good thing uh, but there, there's a number of things actually that need to happen for folks because um, the truth of the matter is that uh, through no fault of, of anyone's when this, you know, when folks were told uh, if you're exposed, you got to stay home for 14 days and you lose a paycheck. Um, and then uh, the schools closed for all the right reasons to protect our children. And then you have to figure that out, right, as well in terms of taking care of your children and your, your small business closes that you've put your whole life into. And, uh, and again, we understand all of that. This was about tackling and saving lives, which had to be the top priority. But um, now as we come out of this, and hopefully in a sensible way, so we're continuing to focus on health and saving lives, uh, it's gonna take a while. And, uh, and the federal government has to be there to, to have people's backs as we come out of this. All right, thank you both very much. Our next question is from Gary in Ascoda. And his question is about the rising waters in Michigan. He wants to know what's being done about our infrastructure here in our state in the wake of especially the flooding in Michigan. You have one minute each for your answer. Senator Peters, we'll start with you. Well, we have significant uh, infrastructure needs uh, all, all across the state that we uh, have to invest in. And certainly we saw the what happens when you don't maintain critical infrastructure in Midland with the failure of two dams that uh, should have been maintained. It was a tragedy that could have been avoided. Uh, we can't let that happen ever again in any community in our, in our state and have to be making investments that are uh, and build on what our parents and grandparents uh, did. I will mention one particular area that I'm focused on is to make sure that we expand high-speed broadband internet. Uh, this pandemic has definitely shown that now that we're all on uh, our various uh, apps and communicating online, and as our students are being educated uh, online, unfortunately a third of the students in our state don't have connectivity. They wouldn't be able to do their homework and do it in ways that are uh, necessary, as well as new technologies like telemedicine, where we can actually provide health care services while people are in the comfort uh, of their home and the safety of their home. These are the kinds of investments we need to make as a country to be a world-class mm -hmm. economy we have to make sure that everything is up to the standards so that they're going that we're going to need to continue to, to lead the all world. right senator thank you very much senator sab and i'm sorry we only have a minute so if you could quickly address the infrastructure needs absolutely rick well first First of all, the, the uh, person asking the questions from Ascoda and certainly PFAS is an issue in water uh, quality and what's happening in the wells. And, and there's so many different challenges for us on water. Um, we have a water infrastructure bill that is coming before the Senate. We we're working to both have uh, some help on uh, PFAS, some help on erosion 
uh, as well as what happened in Mich mid Michigan that relates to uh, the dams and so on, which is a very complicated, horrible situation as well. And then uh, as the uh, the co-chair of the bipartisan Great Lakes Task Force, of course, I'm very, very focused on the, the bigger issues of protecting our Great Lakes. Senators, both, thank you very much tonight. We appreciate you being here. That is all the time we have tonight.